step toward reducing our carbon footprint. So, welcome aboard for an awesome experience that's also awesome for the environment. And now, let's welcome out her amazing tour guide. She's super cool. She's super funny. She's got a super deep voice. It's me! Hi, everybody. My name is Joy. I'm going to be your tour guide today as we lift the veil of secrecy on some of Hollywood's hottest filming locations. Now, before we leave, make sure you have your 3D glasses. If you do not have a pair, raise your hand so we can get you cup, okay? So raise that hand up high, keep it up there so we'll see you. Also, make sure to move all the way towards the right hand side of the tram, filling in every available seat. Watch those arms and legs as those doors are coming down. And if you have any small kids in your party where their feet are not touching the floor of the tram, they need to sit in the center for their safety, alrighty? Otherwise, we'll have some kids fly out of the windows. We don't want that happening again. That was a joke. I do want to make sure, though, everybody is comfortable because it's going to get pretty wily out there. So please, again, little kids, stay in the center. Now, we're going to get out of here in just a minute, but I do first see some people currently wearing their glasses already. Now, if you're wearing your glasses, do me a favor, okay? Take them off. Look around. And you'll see the words are in 3D. All right? You don't need to wear these yeah. just yet. You're only going to need them two times. Once for King Kong 360 3D, and the second time for Fast and the Furious Supercharged. And I promise I'll tell you what that's going to be, okay? Now, don't worry. I am not driving this tram. Not after last time. Again, another joke. I've never driven a tram. Instead, it's my buddy Iris who's driving us. Everyone say, hey, Iris! Hey, Iris! He says, hey! He's going to drive us to about four. Acres today, we are very lucky to have him. There's one more person I need to introduce. He's the current host of the Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon and the host of That's My Jam on NBC with Jimmy Fallon. It's Jimmy Fallon. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy Fallon. I'll be making sure that you get through this experience in one piece. You've got the very best guy, Troy. And the greatest drive. Oh, yes. The best. What up, one? Even though. Joy. Ha ha ha. I know you guys are excited to go on the tour, but first, a few safety rules. That's right, everybody. We got some safety rules to go over. First and foremost, everybody, please stay seated, especially when the tram is moving. Also, keep your arms, your legs, your cameras, your cell phones, your 3D glasses, and anything else. Keep them inside the vehicle, okay? We got these big windows for you to look at them. But if you're next to a window, you have signed on for a very important job. Keeping your cameras in the trunk, all right? Otherwise, all those great pictures you take, they could crash onto the pavement, and we do not want that. So please keep your items safe inside the tram. Now, if an accident happens, like something falls out of the tram, or you may have a sound or video issue, or you can't wait to use the restroom, or you may have a medical emergency, if any of those things happen, don't panic. Just hold the red cord right All right, pull that down. I'll be back to assist you as soon as it's safe to do so. There's no smoking or vaping allowed on this tour, and neither are selfie sticks. Those are dangerous. We don't want to get smacked in the face with a selfie stick. Not again. So please keep those in your pockets or your bags. And finally, we do have several loud noises, some movements, fire effects, and water effects on the tour. So have your cameras ready for those great photo opportunities, but just keep an eye on them so they don't get wet. But don't worry, you'll only get wet if you're sitting in a blue seat, okay? A blue seat. Now everybody, we're making our way down to the Universal Movie Timeline. Look to your right hand side and you'll see just a few of the thousands of films we've made here. But we don't just make movies, we also make TV shows, commercials, music videos, student films, reality competition shows, you name it, we do it every day. Now here, we are in Universal City. It's a real city dedicated to those pictures. We have our own zip code. You probably saw our fire station, but we do have one building that regular cities don't have, which are these very large buildings called sound stages. The biggest one is right in front of you. This beige building over here, this is known as Sound Stage 12. It is the largest and oldest sound stage on the lot. This building dates back all the way to the early monster movies. Now 
the reason they call these big buildings on your left hand side sound stages is because once the doors on the buildings close, these become about 98% soundproof. Their walls are insulated with something called Insequilt, which makes the walls about four times thicker than the average home. And the reason we do that is because when our trams, trucks, and tour guides are driving by, they don't want to hear us. You know, they want to have as much control over the audio as possible. Now, right next door over here, you can see sound stages eight and seven. These two sound stages we use for filming a Peacock series. Peacock is NBC Universal streaming service, and the series that I'm talking about is Bel Air. It's a dramatic retelling of The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and it stars Jabari Banks. Check it out. But as we turn the corner, we're going to be uh, showing you some very cool little cars here. They're not really cars as much as they are trucks and trailers. Yes, these are trailers to the stars. This is where they have their wardrobe pieces. They'll change, they'll take breaks, they'll run their lines. Right behind them, you're going to see Soundstage 14. That's a very famous soundstage. It's been used in movies like Jurassic Park. Do you guys remember the scene where the Brachiosaurus sneezes on the kids when they're in the tree? Yeah, it was filmed inside of that building. It was also Mission Control Center for Apollo 13, directed by Ron Howard, starring Tom Hanks. And it was Mindy Lahiri's doctor's office on the hit TV show, The Mindy Project, starring Mindy Kaling. Now, she didn't just start on that show. She also wrote the show, and she directed the show, and she produced the show, and she created the show, and she did basically everything else, because Mindy Kaling is a superstar. She's a total powerhouse. Now, she was able to do a lot of that work here in the front lot, because this is where we do a lot of the pre- and post-production. Pre-production means all the stuff that happens before film, like the writing of the script, the building of the sets. And post-production is the stuff that happens after filming, like editing and sound mixing. But production is the actual film portion, which takes the least amount of time when it comes to making TV shows and movies. And let me tell you, we've made a lot of TV shows here in the front lot. Take a look at your screens. Now the front lot has been home to many, many stars, and we actually have some stars to show off to you. In just a moment, you're going to see the Minions on the right hand side of the uh, trailer. They're saying, Beat over the Universal Tour. Now, Illumination Entertainment, they brought you movies like, you know, Despicable Me and the Super Mario Brothers movie with the best song ever. Peaches, 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 peaches. How did that not get nominated for Best Original Song? I don't know. I don't know. But, everyone, we got another big star to show off to you. Over on the left hand side, you're going to see Ted, the Teddy Bear. He's cheersing the tour. Now, Ted has his own Peacock series that just came out. Check it out. Here's Seth McFarlane to tell you more. Hi, everyone. Seth McFarlane here, and I'm excited to share with you what a high-scale story of the Peacock Original Events series it's a prequel series set in 1993. That means our senior craftspeople had to build a high school, a house, and even recreate downtown Boston as it looked back in the day using exterior sets and facades that you're about to see on the tour. But I should warn you, Ted is intended for mature audiences only. So grown-ups, tell the kids to go in the other room before you watch. Come on! <laughs> Make sure to go check out Ted. Now, he's standing in front of our production bungalows. These bungalows on the left-hand side, these used to be dressing rooms for some of Hollywood's hottest stars like Rock Hudson, Doris Day, Jimmy Stewart, and everybody's favorite redhead, Lucille Ball. But now, they're actually their uh, offices for the top writers, directors, and producers in town. But our most famous bungalow is coming up on the very end. It's number 5195. There's a silhouette next to the number. That silhouette shows that that bungalow used to belong to Sir Alfred Hitchcock the director of such films as Psycho, Rear Window, and The Birds. Now as we drive on forward here, on your right hand side, this is the Johnny Carson building. Johnny Carson was the host of The Tonight Show way before Jimmy Fallon ever moved in. And he's the reason a lot of famous comedians got their first TV appearance. People like Eddie Murphy and Steve Martin. And in this building, this is where a lot of casting happens. So in a way, Johnny Carson is still helping actors catch their big break. Now on the left hand side, these are two of our newer sound stages. These ones are 100% soundproof and there's editing bays right inside, so footage gets edited very fast, and in there is where we film the show Lopez vs. Lopez, starring George Lopez and his daughter Maya. But now we are leaving the front lot behind, because we're now in the back lot, and this is where we shoot the big stuff, people. Speaking of big stuff, look at this big wall here. It's got a lot of big buildings on it from Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York. They were digitally put together to make a generic cityscape in case we ever needed a wide-angle shot of an unnamed city. Now, as we drive on forward, we're going to show you some buildings here. They do look real, don't they? Well, they're not. They're made of plastic, plaster, and plywood. It makes them a lot more pliable. Thank you. Those are the four plus of design. Now, as we drive on forward here, you're going to see over on the right, you can see Brownstone Street. See those stairs on those apartments? They may look familiar from a scene in Bruce Almighty. Place the door! Outside, 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 outside,
Everybody, welcome to my favorite area of the lot. You are currently driving on the very same street that Marty McFly drove the DeLorean 88 miles back to the future. As we turn the corner, you will see the clock tower. That got struck by lightning, setting 1.21 gigawatts of power into the flux capacitor. Now, I know the clock tower looks different than it did in the movie. That's because there's a facade over there. Now, a facade is a French word, which means false front, where you gotta build the fronts and the sides of buildings, and your imagination will just fill in the rest. The reason we did that to the original clock tower was because filmmakers realized it was too recognizable to be used in future productions. Now, you can see this currently on Ted. This is actually his high school that he goes to in 1993 Boston. But this area was here way before Back to the Future ever moved in. This is where the very first episode of The Twilight Zone ever filmed. It's the episode where the soldier, he wakes up in the town, but there's no one around. <laughs> but this area, we, uh, we love this space. We've had some musicals out here, like Hairspray Live, they did that on NBC. But it looks like we're going to leave the small town of Hill Valley behind by Courthouse Square because we're going to take you to a much bigger apple. Let's take you over to New York Street. Take it away, Jimmy Fallon. Hey, everyone. Welcome to New York. I'm going to start right here in New York on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old neighborhood. I always got mugged over there. That old woman. Tough lady. This is my favorite hot dog guy. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. Hey, I'm walking here. Oh, yeah. 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 I was just, you know, I was just walking there. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. Now, if you're a fan of American Ninja Warrior, then you are a fan of this street, because this is where they set up the obstacle course for the LA Finals. We've also had some Marvel superheroes out here. Two different Spider Men, Andrew Garfield, the amazing Spider Man, and Tobey Maguire in Spider Man 2. But my favorite Marvel superhero who's been on this street is Captain America, the first Avenger, starring my husband, Chris Evans. Okay, that's not true. He's not my husband. He did get married recently, and it's been really hard on all of us. Also, my boyfriend doesn't like when I when I tell that joke, so I'm gonna move on from that. But yes, the scene where he's running down the street chasing the taxi cab barefoot, that's the street you're sitting on right now. Now these buildings, like I mentioned, they're not real. There's not much going on on the insides. Most of these are known as shells. A shell is where you build all four walls of the building, but you don't fit the camera crew on the interior. They can't fit. So we use these for the exteriors, the outside filming. Then we do the interior filming in the sound stages we showed you earlier, and it's the editor's job to cut it all together in post-production, right? Now, these buildings, they're very cool, but we're doing a lot of movie magic all around you. Look at the windows. The higher they go up, the smaller they get. That's actually on purpose. It's called forced perspective. Now, you know when you see something real far away, it gets smaller, right? Well, we are forcing that perspective on you by making the windows smaller the higher they go up. Then we'll pan upwards on these buildings, stop right before you get to the roof, and because the windows are smaller, it gives the illusion that the buildings continue on. But no building here at Universal is more than like 50 feet tall. Now, another cool thing about it, see that pie shop on the left-hand side? That doesn't need to be a pie shop. That could be any shop we want. That sticker is just that. It's a sticker called a decal. We put that uh, sticker of a uh, pie on there. We can peel it off. Maybe tomorrow it's going to be a cell phone shop or perhaps a yoga studio. Who knows? It depends on whatever the production calls for. But now, we're leaving the Metropolitan sets behind because we are now going to go to the jungle where we got some fun and games. It's uh, all about this jungle is Academy Award winning director Peter Jackson. It's the original King Kong that, that made me want to do it. Uh, I yeah. saw that movie on TV when I was uh, uh, eight or nine years old. I wanted to pick up a film. I like films that just take you away from your sweet I was thrilled when Universal invited me back to Star It's great to have you all arrived. Now we have created this 3D immersive experience, so you're going to have to have your glasses ready. Don't put them on yet. Just put them in your hand because it's 
for Valentine's Day. That's right, everybody. It's going to be a bumpy ride, so please stay seated and keep all your items inside the tram. If you draw your phone in here, I cannot retrieve it for you, so please secure your items. But I'll tell you, if you try to take a video of King Kong, it's going to get so crazy, bumpy, wild inside that if you do take a video, it's just going to look King wrong. So I would say keep your cameras in your pockets or your back so they do not fly out of the tray. But if you do take that camera out, make sure the flash is turned off. Flash photography is not allowed, so if you see a flash on your neighbor's phone, please tell them to turn it off. And everyone, let's head on in to Skull Island. Okay, glasses well, on everybody. We're back in Skull Island. Is everybody okay? Oh, oh, God. Can you guys get up there and pray for them? Feel free to take these 3D glasses off now and just hold on to it. We just showed you the second most intense 3D experience in the world. By the end of this tour, you will have seen the first. Now, what you just saw was the result of six different IMAX movie screens. Brilliant minds over at Weta FX created that performance. They've won multiple Academy Awards, including for King Kong, also for the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit Avatar, Avatar the Wonder, and the Avengers Infinity Saga. Those screens are about 40 feet tall and 180 feet wide, completely encapsulating you, helping King Kong save us from those terrifying T-Rexes. Thanks, King Kong. Appreciate you. Project Break Studio Tour, the audience Shrek! is in the middle of the environment. They're looking in all directions, there's creatures coming at them, they're seeing Kong from this side and T-Rexes from the other side. Working on the moon, we always know where people are. 
shot. Not really. You have to take into account that people are looking in all directions. Also, one of the things about this wild island is that we're working on there's no cuts because it's one giant shot. It's trying to drive it all into the skull island because we're playing this front. This way, where the screen is 10 meters away. We're really creating about 50 minutes of a feature film. That amount of visual information, that number of pixels, and presenting them to the audience. It's a hell of a ride. Now, speaking of rides, you probably noticed that our tram was pulled on screen by that big T-Rex. When that happened, that turned the tram to what's known as a picture car, which just means any vehicle that you see on screen or in the pictures, right? We're going to show you some of our most famous picture cars, so please stay seated and keep your cameras in the tram, but get them ready because on the left-hand side, you're going to see the picture car display. Now, first up, we got the Ford from American Graffiti. Followed by the Magna P.I. Ferrari and Biff's car from Back to the Future. That's the one that got covered in manure, and Biff hates manure. He said so in Back to the Future Part 2, which we also have some cars from. Now, these cars are based in the year 2015, and they're all supposed to fly, but... Apparently, they were not ready for us in 2015 for real flying cars. I will say, though, the Ford Probe does look a lot like a Prius, and that movie was pretty prophetic. Back to the Future Part Two predicted the Chicago Cubs would win the World Series in 2015, and they did. A few cars down, you're going to see uh, the Willie's Coop from The Fate of the Furious, the Gyrosphere from Jurassic World, and the Fry's Electronics Van from Jordan Peele's Nope. The boat right next to it is another Jordan Peele picture car. Yes, a boat can be a picture car. That's the Crawdaddy boat from his terrifying film, Us. The big tank on the end, that's from Transformers, directed by Michael Bay. Now, that is a tank, but do not take it into battle. Because it's made out of plywood. Yeah, we just paint it to look like metal. We do that literally all the time. So whenever you see a big, heavy metal object in the movies, it's probably pretty lightweight. We need to travel with it, right? Now, as we drive on forward, we got another picture car to show you. It's on the right-hand side this time, though. Everyone say hello to the Jurassic Park Jeep. Now, the number on it is 29, but the movie is 30 years old. We love Jurassic Park. We're going to take you through the original set pieces from the film and the Lost World Jurassic Park. So, welcome to Jurassic Park. Just me? Just me singing that? No, no, That's no, fine. Please. We'll get you on another, no, another song. You. Anyway, everybody, as we drive on in here, take a look at all of these metal objects. Huh? What are they really made of? Plywood. Very good job. Yes, even the rest has been painted on. Same thing goes for the mobile lab on the left hand side, covered in camouflage. That was seen in the Lost World to Lost Park. As you drive on forward, we do have some dinosaurs out of their cages, so please hold on to your butts. Original lyrics by John Williams. Now, now we got another really cool special effect from Jurassic Park happening on the left-hand side of the tram. Do you see it? No? Good, because the best special effects should look real. It's those trees. Those trees are made out of foam, rubber, and plastic. The reason is, Jurassic Park is supposed to have plant life from the Jurassic Paleo era. But since none of us ever existed in that era, we had to build the trees ourselves. Also, the tops of the trees, they're not finished. That's because we don't want any branches getting caught within our boom mics when we're traveling or doing, you know, filming. Also, we can put these pieces on little dollies, roll them around the studio or wherever we need to film. Now, Jurassic Park is an incredible film. It's actually the very first movie to combine CGI and mechanical effects into one film. CGI stands for Computer Generated Imagery, and mechanical effects are all effects that are in real life, but you can reset them over and over. We're actually going to show you one of those effects as we drive on down into Old Mexico. You've seen this area on shows like Ma uh, Westworld on HBO Max. Also, you can see the Big Fat Liar and the Three Amigos starring Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, and Martin Short. Now, this area is really cool because I can make this whole area have a big rainstorm happen. That's a very specific type of effect called weather effects. We need it sometimes. 
So, how about we turn them on? Okay. Don't be alarmed. I just pressed the uh, sound and light button. The sound is just a sound effect of, of thunder, and the lightning is coming from a strobe light, just flashing on and off. But to make this a real thunderstorm, we're going to add some rain. So let's turn on the sprinklers. Those sprinklers shoot the water up into the air and it falls down naturally like real rain. The combination of all of these effects together look pretty realistic, don't they? Yeah. But it's really cool if I hit this button. These are all going to turn off at the same time. So get ready. And off. Oh. Sorry about that. It's an and off. <laughs> and off. Uh, okay, we're having some technical difficulties. It seems like the button's not working. Uh, but don't, what's everybody yelling at? Oh no, it's a flash flood! Everybody stay seated! Stay seated! Sit down! Again, everyone, please sit down. I was just playing a joke on you. It was just a joke. I wasn't controlling any of those effects. Okay. That was the result of thousands of gallons of water being released down below. Again, please sit down. If you're standing on your seat, you must sit down in the second car. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. i got to tell you because it's for safety. We don't want anyone falling over. All right? Please stay seated, everybody. Now, you saw that flash flood in the film Big Fat Liar starring Paul Giamatti, Frankie Muniz, and Amanda Bynes. Don't worry, everybody. Paul Giamatti was just fine. All right, that was a stunt double. But you know, we're very excited for Paul Giamatti. His film The Holdovers is nominated for Best of, uh, Best Picture this year for the Oscars. We got another big Oscar nom oh, for Oppenheimer. You can check out both of those movies on Peacock. But now, everybody, welcome to the Old West. Welcome to Six Points. Yeah! Six Points got its name because back in the old days, there were six different streets that all coincided with this one. Each street had its own bank, saloon, and jail, and we could shoot six different westerns at the same time because there were... There was, uh, excuse me, these were the silent film days, so films were not affected by sound like they are today. And the creator of Universal Studios, Carl Lemley, he would charge people only 25 cents to watch a Western be filmed. And they could cheer for the good guys, they could boo for the bad guys, plus they got lunch out of it. It's a pretty sweet deal for just a quarter. Now, you can see this street in the film Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, and Margot Robbie. Also, you can see it on an episode of Quantum Leap, starring Raymond Lee. They film all up and down this street for that whole episode. It's wild. Now, look at the uh, curtains in the windows. Those curtains are hiding the fact that there's nothing behind them. Just like the courthouse, these are facades. Look at the last building on the left. It's not even halfway finished. If you're not going to see it on screen, why waste the time and money to build it? Am I right? Now, as we turn to the right, look to the left. You're going to see sound stages 30 and 31. That's where we film NBC's hit singing competition, The Voice. This big body of water right below, that is known as Park Lake, or as I like to refer to it as, the Black Lagoon. From where the creature from the Black Lagoon still lives to this day. Alright, yes, the creature from the Black Lagoon is one of our many universal monsters. That's the official title of the monster movies because we're known for the genre. Monsters like Count Dracula, the Wolfman, Frankenstein's monster, and his bride. They all got their first steps here at Universal. Oh, and look, there's the Invisible Man. Where? <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's a bad joke. And I've got more. But now, everybody, before we get going, I want to let you know we are halfway through the tour. So, please remember, everybody stay seated for your safety. Thank you for understanding. And if you drop something, have a sound or video issue, can't wait for the restroom, or have a medical emergency, please pull the red cord. But I gotta tell you, we're about to drive over a big body of water. It is not safe to stand here, so please stay seated. And yes, people have dropped their phones in the water, so please don't be that guy, okay? Keep your items in the tram. Welcome everybody to Amity Island. This is where my boyfriend works. That's right, my boyfriend George. He is a scuba diver. He's in the water right now by that boat. Wait, what's that? Is that a dolphin? Oh my goodness, that's a shark. George is in the water, we gotta get him out. George! George, you gotta get out of the water, baby! George? George!
Don't let everybody else find out. There's plenty more fish in the sea. All right? What do we got here? Eris is going to drive as fast as he can to get his work that shark. Get that right, Eris. That's right. As fast as he can. Why are we stopping? Eris, there's a shark in the water. You've got to get away the shark. Are you taking a break right now? Buddy, we got to finish the tour first. Then you can get the shark. That's a much maligned shark. The shark was frustrating. It, it didn't really work all the time. It didn't work hardly at all. Wherever you were on the island, you could hear the radio lines. They were always saying, the shark is not working. Repeat, the shark is not working. We just waited around. We just waited and waited and waited. The shark was working well enough. For a while there, had the basic quality. Well, the shark a lot. Shark. His name is uh, uh, Jaws. His name is Bruce. All right. He was nicknamed after Steven Spielberg's lawyer. And if you ever seen Pixar's Finding Nemo, the shark in that movie is also named Bruce, the one who goes fish all friends, not food. Yeah, they're paying a tribute to Steven Spielberg. As we drive on forward here, look to the right hand side of this beautiful house. This is known as the Chicken Ranch, originally built for the film The Best Little Horrors in Texas, starring Dolly Parton. Now this is an example of a practical set, which means you can film on the outside of it as well as on the inside of it. So it's very practical for film. We're actually going to show you some more houses as we turn the corner. We're going to go up Colonial Street. Now Colonial Street is very popular. You can see it on Candy Cane Lane on Amazon Prime, starring Eddie Murphy and Tracy Ellis Ross. Also on the Netflix series Never Have I Ever, starring my Trey Ramakrishnan. And this is Ted Street. In fact, in just a moment, look to the right hand side of that blue house. That's Ted's house. Festivities begin. How many we got? Well, let's see. We got 20 cottons. Fantastic. Do you think we're getting too old for this? Oh, come on, Johnny. We're doing a public service here. If a kid leaves the house in a less than stellar Halloween costume, he's got to get the bad news before he makes a fool of himself all over town. We're Samaritans. Now, we've got a lot of very cool people out here, like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Sarah Michelle Gellar's character took out a lot of vampires and demons and ghosts. But we've also had some friendly ghosts out here, specifically Casper, the friendly yeah. ghost, starring Christina Ricci and Bill Pullman. And we've also had some music videos filmed out here, too. In fact, somebody once told me that Smash Mouth filmed All Star on this street. Now, these houses are glorious, but you don't want to move in here. They're mostly shelves. Maybe some are semi-practical, somewhat practical for filming on the inside. But in general, we use these for the outsides. Also, number 1434, that's the only house on this street with a bathroom. Yeah, the rest of these have no problem. That's true. Now, this street is glorious. My favorite house on the street, though, is the purple one over there. That's 1313 Mockingbird Lane, also known as the home to the Munsters TV show. But as we head on out this way, let's say goodbye to the nice little residential town on TV we like to see. And as we leave here, you're going to see on the right-hand side, right behind the chicken ranch, is that building. It's a, it says About a Boy tea set. So with the TV show About a Boy filmed here, they built those. Now it's a tea set, not the tea set that you drink from, but a set that's a design in the shape of a tea. The reason they did that is because they wanted to make the look, it look like the chicken ranch had neighbors, but we didn't want to build an entire house to do so. Now these uh, trees that you see all over here, these trees, glorious, absolutely lovely. You know when you see a show like CSI and they find a dead body in the middle of the woods? Yeah, this is where they find them. Yeah, but don't worry, there's no real dead bodies out here. We just love to film. 
We film on every aspect of our property. So we don't just film in the studio. We also film on the park and even on City Walk. In fact, that show Quantum Leap that I mentioned with Raymond Lee, they were filming on City Walk all day one time when I came to work. So keep an eye out here in season two for an entire episode on City Walk, or at least a lot of an episode on City Walk. Now, you're going to see Steven Spielberg drive. That's what we're driving up right now. Steven Spielberg, of course, we all know, an incredible director of so many incredible Universal Pictures. But he actually got his start right where you're sitting. He used to come to the studio tour all the time, and he wanted to be a filmmaker, but he actually did not have the grades to get into film school. So he always came to the studio tour, and he actually one day got a three-day pass to work on a production out here. And once that three-day pass was done, he just kept coming back on the lot. Yeah, he was really good at networking too, so all the security guards were like, Hey, good to see you, good to see you. And this is where he met Michael Creighton, who is the writer of Jurassic Park. Now if you look to the left, you'll see a big airplane crash. That is from Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. Now that is a real airplane. They both bought it and destroyed it for the film. It was only purchased for about $60,000, which is frankly quite a steal for an entire plane, but the shipping and handling is always where they get you. About $200,000 more just to get it here on the lot. But now, everybody, we're going to take you to Jupiter's Claim, which are the actual sets from Academy Award winner Jordan Peele's sci-fi thriller, Nope. The movie stars Oscar winner Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki Palmer, and Stephen Young. They're going to tell you all about it is Mr. Jordan Peele. Take it away. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible notion and bring it to life. Did you watch this yeah. is Jupiter's Clan, a nostalgic, small-time, <laughs> Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky Jupiter Park. <laughs> Over there, look into the winking room. Have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie, Kid Chair. That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Glad you A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. It's not looking so live Anyway, behind this Hollywood fantasy, Films. He is a mastermind of leaving in little details and Easter eggs, so the second time you watch one of his movies, it's a completely different experience than the first. He's really a brilliant filmmaker. But now, everybody, we're going to hang out here for just a moment because it looks like we're going to head inside of Sullivan's truck repair in about a minute. Now, we're going to put you inside of a movie. You guys, you're going to be big stars. Congratulations. You've been discovered in Hollywood. Now, you do not need to wear those 3D glasses yet, okay? You will not need them for about seven minutes, okay? I promise I will tell you when that's going to be. But in the meantime, just hold on to them, and we are going to meet up with some very, very famous stars. But until then, I want to let you know what street we're sitting on right now. This is John Williams Drive. Now, if you're a big Steven Spielberg fan, you've probably heard of John Williams, too, because he's the conductor and composer of most of Steven Spielberg's films. He did E.T., Jaws, he's done Indiana Jones, The Olympics, NBC Nightly News, the list goes on and on and on. He's an amazing uh, musician. And he actually writes all of his music in the key of C, so it helps us to remember his music easier. It's a really brilliant move because our brains are actually hardwired to recognize middle C on a piano. So if you think of any of John Williams' music, think of Jaws. Star Wars. E.T., right? So he's kind of a genius guy to have a root chord like that, so we're always going to remember his amazing music. And I mean, I don't think any of those themes are going anywhere soon. They're pretty powerful and deep, deep within my brain space. But now, everyone, let's head on inside. It looks like Sullivan's is open for us. And we should be meeting with our co-stars. In fact, 
Are they here yet? Hey guys, we're ready for you. Hello? Hello? Hey yo! It just got here. All right, I got it. But listen, hello, beautiful people, particularly you right there missing the third row. How you doing? You good? My name is Roman Pierce. Buddy Hobbs asked us to stash you, Shaw, for a while. He's brought you in our secret spot. We're having a few friends over. It's a little messy, but it's all good. The more to marry. Especially you right there in that third row. You know what I'm saying? So look, see over there? It's Hobbs Urban Assault Vehicle. Best truck the U.S. government can buy. That work of art back over there was made by my man Tej. Think of it as like a... Mona Lisa on wheels. So did you break it down to them? What's that? You had one job to do, Roman one. All right, look guys, we're gonna keep Shaw from finding you, but to keep you safe, we need your help. We don't want the syndicate tracking us here, so put away your cameras and turn off your cell phones. One flash or one ringtone can give us away. I need y'all to take this real serious. Okay, pull into the next bay and we'll meet you in there. Like I was saying, the third row, right? Let me say it All right, everyone. So, like Letty and Roman just said, please put away all cameras and cell phones. Flash photography is not allowed in this next experience. But now, my actors, you do not need to wear the glasses still, but we gotta get you ready for your acting role. In the next room, there's a big party happening, and you guys are playing the partiers. So, let me hear you go.
This is our turn. Move! Pass to there. Okay, guys, it's showtime. Come on, come to the left. This man will be lost in us. Come on, let him hook him up. to the end of the tour. Let me hear you say, aww. Aww. Oh, you guys, come on. I just say that because I told you to say it. Now, before we get going, I need everybody to burst into loud, uproarious applause for the best driver in the biz, my buddy Aries. Give it up for Aries, everybody. Without this guy, we would have walked the entire tour. All right, so what do you know? He is the best of the biz. And we want to show you one more really cool thing before we head back to Unload. And you are going to see on the right-hand side the beautiful San Fernando Valley. This is what, like, people ever do is, like, the valley. You know, you hear about, like, valley girls? Like, that's the valley that we're talking about. In the distance, you can see Warner Brothers, Disney Animation Studios. We like to say that they look up to us here at Universal. Now, everyone, grab your pictures while you can. It is actually beautiful now. Not that the sun's come up and kind of clear our skies a little bit. Grab those pics while you can. And everybody, we want to let you know how grateful we are that you all came to the studio tour. So thank you so much for joining us here. And if you're an annual pass holder, thanks again for being with us. If you're not an annual pass holder, just go up to the Universal Box Office to see how you can upgrade your ticket to become an annual pass. Download the official Universal Studios Hollywood app. It has all of the information about our theme park, like the show times for Waterworld, wait times for all the attractions, the park closing time, even Super Nintendo World info. And to purchase any of the NBC Universal movies or shows you saw on the tour, visit UPHE.com or ask any of our retailers. And everybody, you've been an extra wonderful tour, so I think you deserve something extra fun. Uh, another bad joke by me. Now, I know a lot of people are here to see the Super Nintendo World, right? Anybody know what Super Mario's favorite disco movie is? Mamma Mia! All right, everybody. I think you know what's coming up next. A dance party. Oh, yeah. We're going to have a dance off, car by car. Car one, you're up first. Let's see what you got. Yes, car one. Work, car one. Ooh, car two, let's see. Come on, car two. Oh, yes, hands in the air. Love it. Car three, let's see. What you got, car three? Yes, disco, baby. Car four, bring it home. Oh, yeah, you see this girl? Her name is Joy, she is your tour guide. <laughs> do, 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 do. Anybody know what time it is? Time to rock and roll. Got it. 
Bring the noise. What do you have in here? All right, guys, now listen, this is the Blues Riff and Beat. Watch me for the changes and try and keep up, okay? One, two, one, two, three, four. She did all the rhythm, all right. She know how to shake that thing. There's another tram in front of us, so we're waiting for them to get out of our way so we can take you back to Unload. So once again, thank you all so much for your patience, and I think we all deserve a little comedy in the movies, don't you think? here once again. Please stay seated until the doors have opened on the left-hand side. You can drop your 3D glasses off on the bed to the left, and everyone, be kind to each other, make everyone smile. Have a wonderful day here at Universal Studios Hollywood, the entertainment capital of L.A. As they say in the business, that is a wrap, people. Bye!